Hey guys, so this video is really for me to talk about something um, and it's not easy to talk about because whenever you talk about being taken advantage of, kind of like the Bernie Madoff scenario where all these supposedly wealthy and financially astute investors they were taking advantage of and when it came out they did not want their names associated because then that would tarnish uh, how intelligent they would be, right? Um, so a lot of times when people are scammed, they never publicly tell you, hey, I've been scammed or I've been taken advantage of. Um, that's the rarity in the magic community. It's almost like the speculator who speculates on 10 cards. One of them goes up, but he, he'll never talk about the other nine speculations, right? Because then that would tarnish his ability to sell, I guess, subscriptions and you know, Discord channels, and so on, right? And financial paywall articles that you're never going to read. Um, so let's talk um, strictly about um, opening a store. Now, one thing that I was very naive about was, and I met with my CPA, I remember this meeting, and we had calculated, I thought, every variance, every variable, you know, what if the margins go down? What if, you know, this product doesn't sell? What if this product distributor doesn't have X, Y? So I knew what numbers I needed to hit um, to break even, uh, given the payroll, given the electric. We had it modeled out. We had the cascade modeled out. But... One thing that we had not calculated on was stolen merchandise. Now, I'm not going to say, did an employee steal it? Did a potential customer steal it? Did a customer steal it? Who knows? But at the end of the day, according to my POS point of sales, uh, there, were a lot, there was lots of booster packs missing. And once I removed magic from the equation, then there were no more booster packs missing because then, you know, it's just Disney, Disney mystery minifigures. It was just Lego sets. It wasn't magic related. Now, there was also lots of Pokemon product missing. And as I have recorded on my other video, which I have evidence um, that um, people would return product uh, and they would open the, po the Pokemon packs, they would reseal them, they would take the code. So every Pokemon pack has a code. Um, and then they would reseal it. They take out the foil or the valuable card and they would slice the bottom of it. They would glue it back together and then they return it. Now, I'm not, I was not always at the store. So they would return it to an employee. Their employee would then give the refund and then restock it. But then a new customer buys it and clearly, you know, they will open it in front of it and clearly it's been tampered with. Um, so there's loss there because not only do you need to, you know, hey, keep the product for free customer and here's some new packs for free. You have to make it right with the customer, right? Because the customer has, thinks that you've done this to packs that you have done it when in fact it was a previous customer who had, who had done it and they might never return. So it's kind of hard to gauge even who it is. Um, there are times where I've had, I've caught employees um, putting stuff in their backpacks um, and then, of course, they said, oh, well, you know, I was going to take it out. Then, like, why do you put it in there? I, there was times where uh, we did do tournaments. We did do content, um, Friday Night Magic, if you will. And there were times where product went missing. And I found out later it was given as extra prize support to, quote, build up the community. And, and you know, there's no trackability of it. Like, right, they never scanned it. We don't know how many... I do remember there was 20 boxes, 22 packs of Modern Horizons. Uh, so I always bought them in two packs. And we get them in, in hundreds. So there was 100 of them. We must have sold 80 of them because that's what our POS system said. And then I was like, okay, so where's the other 20? It was gone. Uh, and then there was that employee, and you guys think it's a meme, but this is actually what happened. I had a... 200 at the time it was a 300 dollar uh fake grand order figure and the dude had cheetos and he didn't even we don't even carry cheetos right that he got the cheetos somewhere he bought you know people bring food from home 
or outside the store to eat, even though you have the same exact items in the store, right? Uh, soda being the number one item that they would bring from home or from somewhere else. And it was just so discouraging that this guy who, you know, bought his own food to the store, who um, paid his $5 F&M fee, would then go about and destroy a three hundred dollar figure, which is it's still I still have it upstairs in my it's not sellable at any um yeah, loss. Um whether that be a scam or whether that be, you know, a mail or reverse scam or a counterfeit card being sent back to you. I mean, take this ex seller for example. This um seller right now, he so did Black Lotus, uh, and then a research workshop was also sent back to him fake. So he's probably out fifteen thousand dollars. Well, how much money did he actually make from selling on eBay after all fees and stuff? Like, how difficult is it to make fifteen thousand dollars profit on eBay? It's very. I'm not talking about your revenue. To generate fifteen thousand dollars profit, your prob your revenue is probably north of north of eighty k. Because you have eBay fees, you have margins, you have shipping, you have lost packages, and the point I want to say is, it's not necessarily the amount of loss that matters. Because what I found by selling like smaller packages, they typically get to the end user. But when a criminal, in this case, buys a very expensive card, his intentions are not to, oh, cool, I'm buying this expensive card, that's great. No, his intentions are to scam you. Uh, that's his intention. And maybe he enrolls another YouTuber and you guys make a video um, demeaning the you know buyer, making the buyer feel little, even though the buyer... Uh, clearly is in the right in this case. They would do anything. I mean, just the level of uh, vitriol that these buyer these uh, buyers have sometimes is like insane. Um, I remember when I had the website operational, I sold like a two dollar card. It was shipped in good condition, and then he got there. It got there. Um, I had tracking. I don't know why it had tracking on it, but it had tracking, and then the the person who received it just threw a fit. I, I don't even know why. I still till this day I don't know why. So selling things is not easy. There's a whole department called customer service that deals with returns, that deals with ups, upset customers, and yeah, some of them are trying to ruin your company for whatever reason. And I think that applied more to me um, because my store was, I mean, obviously I have a YouTube channel and I would say it's a little bit toxic, if not a lot of toxic, right? So that's why I don't sell. I mean, I very quickly learned that the only way to profitability was to get rid of Magic the Gathering and sell merchandise like pluses and K-pop and Legos. That's how we got to profitability was I... I let go of the Magic the Gathering employee that does the tournament. I think he was also a judge. Um, and I said, no more. We're not going to, we're going to, no, I'm going to keep the Magic product. We're going to not buy any more Magic product. And whatever we have, we'll try to sell. If we can't sell, I'll find we'll store it. We didn't do FNM anymore. We didn't do EDH 19. We didn't do any of this stuff. And that A, made our hours better so I had to pay employees less because they were working less hours and I got rid of that employee completely um, and then on top of all of this we didn't have as much stone stony merchandise nothing went missing um, now that might be due to the employee but that also might be due to the con I mean magic the gathering it's a, literally a piece of cardboard so when you have your singles displayed out it's literally Four hundred, five hundred dollars, you know, dual lands, uh, unlimited dual lands. We had a bunch of unlimited dual lands that went missing too, and it was like, okay, our point POS system says that we should have them. Where did they go? 
and no one can answer that question. And I, you know, I, I don't really know. I don't have 100% evidence, but I can tell you that we lost about 10 to 15% of our inventory somehow. Now, was it customers? Was it employees? I don't know who it was, but I mean, when you're losing that much inventory, because that's not just, you know, profit. That's not your, you're losing the profit, which you are. You're losing the actual inventory, just like this guy who lost his Black Lotus. He, he's not worried about profit at that point. He just wants his Black Lotus back. And of course, he got a fake one. So now he's out $9,000 in terms of an asset. Hi, <laughs> guys.